Hey y'all, Irix Guy here, and I promised everyone that I'd post a video after I upgraded to El Capitan. Now, El Capitan obviously is the most current version of Mac OS X that was released today on September the 30th of 2015. Now, I did encounter some issues after the upgrade. Now, I've got two Macs. I've got a uh, MacBook Pro with Retina, and then I've got the iMac with 5K Retina Display, my primary studio computer. So I did them one at a time. I did not install until I performed a complete time machine backup of the computer first. So I wanted to make sure that if, if something irrecoverable occurred that I was able to go back and, and restore to a known good state. So with that said, the installation seemed to be okay. It was, it was a somewhat large download. I think it was around six gigs. The installation seemed to be okay, but after I logged in, the first thing I was greeted with and you can find a uh, screenshot of it. I've posted it within the link within this video's description, but it was an error pertaining to mail. Now, for my mail application on Mac OS X, I've got a ton of stuff. I've got multiple email addresses, and I've got uh, iCloud as well that I incorporate into my mail. So I've got folders that I've created within iCloud for saving certain emails that are important, and then that way I can pull them up from my for my iPod Touch or my iPhone 6 Plus, as well as obviously my MacBook, uh, my MacBook Pro or my iMac, so they're in the cloud. So when I when I launched Mail, it said that it was going to repair everything. Now, fortunately, it repaired everything, and everything everything seemed to be okay. But upon further investigation, I did I did discover some issues. Number one, my email signatures, although they still existed they were not active so I had to go back in had to go back in for my various email accounts and apply the uh, and associate rather the appropriate email signature with that email address so that was number one and number two the biggest problem that I encountered was with the iCloud folders within the mail application because I've got multiple folders I've got subfolders I've got a lot of very very important information so it was not there but fortunately, I found a fix for that as well. You can check the link within this video's description. I posted a quick video explaining how I recovered the iCloud folders within Mail after upgrading to Mac OS X El Capitan. So that may be an issue that you encounter as well. If you do, I hope that that fixes you as well. Now, things that did work well went into messages and I had messenger linked with my iPhone and, and I went in there and all of that seemed to still be in place and obviously of utmost importance to me is Final Cut Pro 10. So when I initially launched Final Cut Pro 10 it took forever. You know I guess it was you know re-indexing or whatever it needed to do when it launched for the first time after the OS upgrade. But it took forever it finally launched and then I went into a video project and as soon as I opened it it crashed. So you know, that was, not a, that was not a warm and fuzzy type feeling because it completely crashed. And then I hit reopen and it went back in. And fortunately, after reopening Final Cut Pro 10, I did a quick glance through. All my projects were there. All of my events were there. All of my information, my, my same hierarchy that I created uh, within Final Cut Pro 10 on Yosemite, all of that's still there. And I, at the time of posting this, I've got about... Uh, I got about a dozen videos that I'm exporting out of Final Cut Pro 10 that that were obviously filmed in 4K Ultra HD. This video is one of them. It's not exporting now because I'm still filming it, but I've got 12 videos exporting now through compressor in 4K format. And I will tell you, and maybe I'm crazy, but it seems like they're exporting a lot faster than they did with Yosemite. So I don't know if it's just my mind playing tricks on me. Or if, uh, or if Mac OS X El Capitan has somehow sped up the, uh, you know, the compressor video export process for 4K. I don't know. You know, maybe it hasn't, but I'm, I'm looking at it out of the corner of my eye right now, and I can see out of those 12 videos, I've only got two remaining. Now, these are probably five to seven-minute duration videos, so I'm actually quite impressed with that. Now, as far as any other problems, obviously, I just updated I just fixed my mail, and I just went into Final Cut Pro and edited those projects, and they're exporting now. 
because those are my main things. Those are my those are my main concerns. I want to make sure all of that was there. Now, what I've also checked at this point in time, I use a third-party image image editing application called Pixelmator or Pixelmator. I don't know how you pronounce it, and it still works. Now, there was an update for that. I think it was on the yeah, it was on the 26th, I think. So maybe that put some enhancements in place that enabled Pixelmator to work after the El Capitan upgrade. I'm just speculating. So if you're having problems with Pixelmator, you may want to go to App Store and make sure you're running the most current copy because it works for me. Now the other things, I went into Photos because I do use iCloud to, to store my photos now. I went in there, everything seems to be there. And then also my old, uh, I had some photos, photos that I had saved locally. It was actually before Photos. Those were iPhoto and those are still there. So, so far, so good. Uh, Safari, it seems to behave in a more snappy fashion. Maybe that's just my mind playing tricks on me, but it seems to be a lot snappier. And overall, the OS seems to be a lot snappier. And what was interesting, as of about a week and a half ago, my Yosemite started throwing memory errors. It was saying, you know, memory, uh, memory completely consumed or something along those lines, and it popped up the uh, force quit window. And it would say applications are paused, and I could I could terminate those applications or whatever to restore. So I don't know if there was some sort of memory leak that was introduced on the tail end of uh, of Yosemite's uh, update cycle, because I didn't know. I've, I mean, I've got 32 gigs in the iMac, and I didn't notice the. Uh, I've never noticed memory issues, and I've obviously performed the same task on a daily basis that I always have, and it didn't surface until about a week and a half ago for the first time. I haven't changed any of the system configuration. Exactly the same. So I don't know if that was uh, you know, something that was introduced with a, with a recent Yosemite patch or whatnot, but it was, it was really bizarre that happened. But yeah, so far, everything with El Capitan, it seems to be a lot faster. And I'm looking right now, and all of those exports are almost finished. I mean, it's, it, it honestly seems like they're flying through. So I'm hoping that the videos are exporting properly because that, that'd be a bummer once I watch them and they're corrupted or something, but I don't anticipate that happening. So, yeah, everything everything so far except for the mail. That, that mail was very, uh, that was very concerning, the way that that happened. But what have you experienced with El Capitan? Has it been a, um, has it been a smooth upgrade process? Have you encountered issues? If so, which issues have you encountered? And have you found fixes for them? Because it's, you know, it's one of those things. Like I said, I've this is what I use, and this is what I've immediately touched immediately following the successful upgrade. So I mean, there may be other problems that you've experienced because of your computer usage uh, habits that I haven't even touched yet, and vice versa. So I hope this helps. El Capitan, you know, let's let's just hope that everything uh, works really well and. Uh, I'm still staring at it over there. You know, I've, you know, it's like anything else. If it's an OS upgrade or just a uh, firmware update on a, on a device such as a DJI Phantom, you know, you always cross your fingers and you always hope for the best because, you know, you're you're completely dependent upon the people that they tested it thoroughly before they put it into production, and then also that just because it was tested within a lab environment somewhere doesn't mean that's going to behave the same way with the software that you have installed on your computer at your office. So hopefully it all goes well. And appreciate your viewership. Be sure to subscribe. It's youtube.com forward slash irixguy. And check the link within this video's description. You can find a plethora of, um, of Mac OS X El Capitan information. And as I discover new things, I'm going to post all of that uh, all that tutorial type information there as well. Y'all have a good day.